It is evening. The greatest part of my day is already spent. And I come to a time now of attunement to my source. A time of rest, relaxation, meditation. A time of new commitment to spiritual purpose and growth. Already the body has been prepared with stretching and breathing with balanced relaxation. And now taking a deep breath, stretching the rib cage and filling the lungs from bottom to top, I sigh it out and float away to a quiet, open meadow, my perfect place for meditation, relaxation. I begin to think about this beautiful meadow. It's becoming now a special place for me, a place where I go often to visit a subtler reality, a greater reality, the cause world from which all that I experience with the senses is a result. Begin to see the meadow now. Look at the colors, the shapes, the hills, the trees, the flowers and grass of the meadow. Begin to see it. Create an image with the eye of the memory, the eye of the mind, the subtler sight. The subtler sight is developing now so that I begin to see in this meadow, in this subtler reality, symbols, pictures, ideas that can communicate with me. Perhaps when I go to the meadow, from time to time, I will see an image of a symbol or a form. Perhaps a person, a presence, that will communicate to me a teaching, a thought, an idea. As if my meadow were a stage on which a drama can be presented with symbols of peace or of progress. Instruction can be presented. My subtler sense of sight is becoming a tool that can be used by the inner teacher, my source, the source of mind and life. See the meadow and see it clearly. And the image of the meadow becomes progressively clear, clearer as we visit here again and again. Perhaps I'll draw the meadow, paint it, and see the colors, the images that I wish to become more familiar with in this special meadow. Walk in the meadow now. Don't just imagine it. Be there. Make this meadow a prime reality for this time of meditation. This is not just where I'm thinking about. This is where I am. And I walk through the meadow and feel the grass underneath my feet. Remember a time when you were walking in a pleasant meadow, barefoot perhaps, and you could feel the texture, the temperature of the grass, deep lush green grass between your toes under your feet, walking in a cushion like a carpet. Now make that sense come alive. Recreate the feeling itself so that the subtler sense of feel is awakened. And I can feel in my meadow, feel with a subtler sense of feeling. I can feel the warmth of sunlight on my face a breath of a breeze. I can feel the bark of a tree, the slickness of a green leaf. 
I can smell the freshness of the air and the wild flowers. I can touch the water in the brook as the brook is tumbling and splashing, trickling, gurgling over rocks in the stream. I can look down into the water and see the sunlight dancing, sparkling on the surface of the water. And I can see the stones in the bottom of the brook distorted by the flow of water over their surface. And I can reach into it with my fingers, with my hands, and I can feel the cold water trickling between my fingers. I can scoop it up, using my hands like a cup, and bring the cool, clear water to my lips and taste it on the tongue, in my mouth and throat. The sense of taste is awakened. The sense of smell. Try to remember a time of smelling wild flowers. Maybe even the scent of roses. Now recreate that sense and fill yourself with a heavenly scent of a quiet open meadow, a place of nature. Create all the sensations of being there. Don't just see yourself there. Surround yourself with this reality. Walk through the meadow, touching things, feeling things, hearing things. Listen to the sound of the birds and the sound of the breeze. And awaken that subtler sense of hearing that could become clairaudience. As I listen to thoughts, words, ideas, a communication from the source within me, because I have made subtler senses available for communication with the source of life. And so is the purpose of this meadow, to awaken five subtler senses, to bring a peace and a calm to the body, to take my mind away from the sensory world, to cause me to realize that the world of the senses, the world of matter and material, is not the limit of reality. There is a greater reality. And as I take my attention away from the sensory reality, I can spend the time in this greater reality, allowing my mind to move freely and creatively to see and experience the things that I want even the sensory world to be. And if I spend a time every day in a creative, quiet, and beautiful, subtler reality, I will bring the peace and the creativity, the joy of this place into my everyday life and make every day more beautiful for the experience. My body becomes attuned as I spend a time in this beautiful, subtler reality. The muscles, the nerves, the circulation, all are affected by this time of withdrawing from the cares of the world. It's a healing time. And most of all, this meadow and the mountain, the sacred place, belongs to a teacher. I have been this day in a school, the planetary school. And the school is populated by people who cooperate with my teacher to present to me each day those expressions, lessons, opportunities I most need to discover myself and to grow. And from the experiences of this day, from the people that I've met, the incidents I've encountered, I can learn new responses, new reactions, new ways of communicating and relating that will cause my life to be more effective. Today has been a day in a school. And I've stepped away from that now to relax for a time, to renew and refresh myself. And I will review the day 
and put it in its proper perspective as I relate more closely with my source, as I walk through the meadow. I feel the anticipation of joining with this inner teacher, the designer of the school in which I walk and work and live through my day. And I'm beginning already to feel the anticipation of this quiet visit, a quiet talk with the Master, a time of listening, of being inspired, a time of teaching. And feeling that anticipation, I walk through the meadow toward the sacred mountain. It is a spectacular place, a seven-terraced mountain, built of seven gardens, each of a different color, leading like stair steps to the top, and to the top obscured behind a cloud, a brilliant light at the top that I know is the light of enlightenment, the inner light that is within me. And the mountain represents those seven steps to higher consciousness, the highest place that I can reach with my mind and with my thoughts, with my intent. And I direct myself, I direct my purpose to the highest that is within me, to find the light at the peak of my mountain. My meditation will be a mountaintop experience. And at the top of the mountain, I will encounter the source of light, the light that gives enlightenment and life to everyone who comes into the world. Walking across the meadow and approaching that first garden, at the base of the mountain, a brilliant red garden, bright red flowers introduce red energy, the energy of anticipation, expectancy, excitement, and I can feel it now. I'm getting excited as I move into this first red garden. Meditation can be an exciting experience, especially because meditation is a tool for changing my life, for healing, for perfecting my consciousness, attuning to my source. And that is an exciting concept. And I enter this red garden and move about among the flowers, the shrubs, the bushes, tending the roses and smelling them. I touch a soft velvet petal of a rose and smell of it. I see it set like a ruby in the green of the leaves, and I touch a slick leaf. And I feel the excitement, the anticipation that is associated with the red color and the vibration of red moves through me, attuning me to that color of excitement, anticipation. And I repeat again my commitment, the mantra of the first terrace. I will approach the meditation experience with a sense of anticipation and expectancy I expect to be changed by this experience. And I move on, climbing the mountain a little higher, coming into a second garden, passing trees, shrubs, bushes. The beauty of a nature, nature trail brings me to a brilliant orange garden. And the orange flowers of this garden remind me that anticipation, expectancy of red will change into yellow, a new life. But I must pass through the terrace of death, of ending, of forgiveness. And in this orange garden, I am reminded to forgive myself for all mistakes that I have made today, to feel finished with the past, not to cling to guilt or hurt or anger, resentment, any of those things that may have welled up within me today, any hurt I've felt toward anybody, any feeling of disappointment, all those things, the experiences of today were today's experience, and I may learn and grow from them, but I must not cling to them. 
the negative emotions of today must die. And I will bury them here in this orange garden, the terrace of forgiveness, the death of the old. I will not go to sleep tonight carrying with me feelings of hurt or resentment, of fear, of failure. I'll bury the guilt. I'll bury the negative emotions here and finish with them. I forgive myself in every way. And I forgive all those who might have disappointed or misused me or have spoken to me in any way that was disappointing. And I make again the commitment of the second garden. I forgive myself all mistakes and errors. I affirm that it is all right to make mistakes. I am not my past. I will not cling to an old self-image. I am prepared to see myself in a new way. I will die to who I used to be and find out who I can become. And releasing all those thoughts of today, all the tensions and cares, I move still higher up the mountain. Again, following the nature trail over the rocks and past the shrubs and the trees, I come now to a bright, sunny, yellow garden, the garden of new life, the garden of new beginnings, and the beautiful, bright, yellow flowers of this garden lift my spirit and feel like a washing, a cleansing, a renewal. It's a metamorphosis. I've left behind the caterpillar and feel blooming into the butterfly. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I will move from this meditation experience into the experience of the night, of rest and renewal. And tomorrow I wake a new being. And I don't yet really know just what I shall be, but I do know that I will not enter tomorrow carrying the burdens of today or yesterday. I've released that. I don't see myself as having the limitations or weaknesses, problems or fears or habits that are yesterday's habits. I've become new. I feel new. I'm experiencing a new me. And turning loose of the past and starting the new, I move from the yellow garden still higher up the mountainside until I come into a quiet green garden, the garden of the forest. The garden with sunlight filtered through the leaves of the trees, casting a beautiful healthy green about me in the sunlight and the air, the shadows. The fronds of fern growing green beside the path and moss deep lush green grass and cushions of pine needles on the forest floor the smell of cedar and pine the quiet of the forest and here is that presence, the presence that is always with me. But when I come to this level of consciousness, I become even more aware of that presence that is always in me, always part of me, the teacher part, the higher consciousness, the mind that seeks ever to attune me to my source, always draws me to my highest good. There's a presence here that's like the presence of a friend, closer than a brother, a teacher, a wise being. And most of all, someone who loves, cares deeply, and fully accepts me, even with all the mistakes and errors that he can readily see and understand. Still, I am acceptable, accepted, all right.
And I feel secure in that all lightness. I feel good walking with the inner teacher. It's a time of welcome as I make a commitment again to the fourth garden. I commit myself to increased awareness that I am not alone. There is a presence or a factor alive within me that spurs me on to growth. There is a living impulse to be more than an animal or a machine. This presence is like a teacher, a friend, closer than a brother. I will stop all else for a moment to become more aware of this presence and come to know him better. I'll make an assumption that my calling on this presence has precipitated a response. I may feel that response, feel that closeness. Even if I don't, I will assume that that creative intelligence that can give me the ability to communicate surely must be quite capable of communication. I've spoken to the presence, and so that presence has responded and is with me. I'll accept that and walk closely with this presence that I'm coming to know better every day, still higher up the mountain into a fifth garden that is predominantly blue, Blue flowers growing beside and over the path, the cornflowers, the morning glories. The beauty of the bright blue flowers of the fifth garden. And then I remember this is the garden of will. I want to turn loose of the willfulness that may not work in my own best interest. Whatever is the will of the highest for my life is also the best for me. And if, if I seek my highest good, then I seek what is the will of the source for me. And so my will and divine will become one. And my affirmation of the fifth garden is, Thy will be done. I've released the willfulness of the self, of the senses, of limited awareness. I turn loose of the will of appetite and of ignorance, of old habits and beliefs that didn't work for me. To understand best what the highest will is for my expression and my experience, thy will be done and walking together hand in hand, arm in arm, with this source of awareness in life, I come still higher to the the sixth garden, the violet terrace, where the flowers are predominantly violet. Little violets growing beside the path, and orchids, perhaps, in the trees. Maybe arbors with great bunches of grapes, perhaps even amethyst stones in the path. And this violet garden, I remember, is the garden of responsibility. I'm asking for new strength, for renewal and inspiration. I commit myself to take responsibility for all that I receive. I expect to receive strength, renewal, understanding, and I'll take responsibility for that, to use it, to apply it, to make it a part of my life. And the acceptance of responsibility is like a miracle. It causes the cloud to part and the light to stream through on the path. Taking responsibility will allow me to see my path more clearly. And so it is symbolized in this meditation as the act that will part the clouds and allow me to walk through the light, to the top of the mountain. And I walk through the parted cloud into the source of light, as bright as the sun. And the light is so bright that I can't even see into it. 
and perhaps with eyes closed, with the feeling of being blinded by the light before me, still yet I walk, as if I were walking into the sun itself. And the sun swallows me in its light, and the brilliance of the light of enlightenment is shining in and through and around me. I'm swallowed by the sun. And yet I feel as if I swallowed the sun because the light seems to be streaming out of me as if it were in me. And being transparent, the light shines from me and lights up the mountaintop with brilliance. The light that shines out over the clouds and makes them white and the light that shines through the clouds and down into the valley below, all that light is proceeding from me and through me. And in the light of the top of the mountain, I begin deep within myself calling the name of God, that special name, Elohim, that is plural, androgynous, both masculine and feminine, a name that means all that God is, and I call upon the presence of all that God is, using a rhythmic mantra, Elohim. Elohim, 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 I call to the source and know that calling that name will attract that presence, Elohim. Elohim flows through my mind as a mantra of attunement. And I'll continue repeating that word again and again until the word gains the ability to soften and soothe my consciousness. Direct me to the source and the source to me. To attune my mind to its source and the highest thinking that my consciousness is capable of. And calling the name again and again, walking in the light, I walk through the white garden at the top of the mountain until I come to a quiet, reflective pool. And the light that shines from me is reflected in the pool, and on the other side is a temple. I can see the reflection of that special, sacred temple, a spectacular temple, reflecting in the pool. And I cross over the pool to the presence of that temple. And this is the place, the special place within me, where the source of life lives, the source of wisdom, the source of understanding, the source of all knowledge lives here. And as I enter into the quiet of the temple, I enter the depths of myself, the heights of my awareness. It is the mountaintop, and it is the deepest place within me. And the temple is the crown on the mountaintop. See the temple and see the details of it. Know what it looks like because it is a symbol of the house that you have built in consciousness for the spirit of life, the spirit of creativity that lives within. Now see the door swing open and welcome and go inside into the quiet of the temple. And as the door closes behind you, the world is shut out. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. And outside sounds become quiet. And the name again is called Elohim. 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 In the quiet of the temple, calling the presence who lives here. Draw close to the altar. The place of attunement and worship here is a violet flame. And in the violet flame, you can put all of the memories of the past, all of the weaknesses, all the things that you would like to change about yourself. Image them. See what they are like, what they've been like. Beliefs that you would like to destroy. Put them in the flame and see them purified, refined until they yield nuggets of pure gold from which the creative source within you is building a new you, building a new self, 
out of this purest, refined gold. This is the time to review the events of today. I've lived today in a school. I have encountered friends, co-workers, family. And in these encounters, I've had conversations, communication, relationships. And as I go over those in my mind now, can I see responses within me that were mistakes, errors? Can I see communications that were based on negative emotion? Or assumptions that brought hurt or pain or anger? Perhaps there were situations in which I had every right to be angry. But do I want to feel that, and is that the best response for me? If there are incidents of today that need to be replaced with a new response, it's a good idea now to burn that reaction that I'm a bit ashamed of. Put it in the fire. And as a nugget comes from the fire, a gold nugget, label it. Write on it a word that describes a new response that you would like to have in such a situation. And this golden nugget is yours. This new action, this new response, put it in your pocket. It becomes a part of your treasure it's money you can spend. It's value that you have to give. And carry that gold nugget, that lesson learned, that new response. Go through today and find every action, every opportunity that you would like to remake and rebuild. Burn the negative reaction in the fire and take from the fire a new response, a new idea, a new action, a new belief that you will make part of your treasure of life, make part of yourself. Put it in your pocket, take it with you. And now, go to the quiet place in the temple that is the Hall of Records, the library. On the door of this great library is written the words of a promise. I will bring to thy remembrance all things whatsoever you have need of from the foundations of the world. A promise on the door says, I will cause you to remember. The door swings open and welcome, go inside, and there is there a librarian, a record keeper, and great volumes of books. Books about you, books about others, books about the earth, about life. All that you could possibly need to know about yourself and about life are written here. And if you can, but listen. And if you can, during the time of the night tonight, dedicate yourself to listening. I will sleep about a third of my life. And that third of my life should not be wasted. Tonight is a night in a school. And I expect to enter the time of tonight in listening. Listening with my teacher, with my source. And my dreams will be valuable to me. I will expect dreams, even if I haven't been remembering them. And I will expect meaningful dreams tonight that are clear. And my dreams will become clearer and clearer because I request it. I ask of my source, my teacher, speak clearly to me in dreams this night and I will listen. Enter the Hall of Records with that intent. Image a librarian. Introduce yourself to that part of your consciousness that keeps the records within your mind and say 
to that part of the consciousness, you're the keeper of my symbols. The symbols of my subconscious are stored here in this great library. My dreams tonight will use those symbols that are mine, and you are the keeper of the symbols. Bring them to my consciousness and help me to understand them better. Make them clear to my consciousness. Make tonight valuable to me as a learning experience. You may want to spend some time now browsing through the books in the library, asking for understanding of yourself. Ask the librarian to bring you a book about you. Image a book with your name on the cover. It's a particular color, a particular material, a particular size. It may have symbols on the cover. Remember all these things. And as you settle down to sleep tonight, try to hold the image of that book in your mind and keep remembering it and keep seeing it right up until the moment of falling asleep so that the book will be opened and revealed to you during the time of sleeping and dreaming tonight. Image that book and ask the record keeper to bring it to you this night during the time of sleeping and dreaming. Now spend some time before the healing window in the Hall of Records. This great window that shines with a healing light a flood of sunlight from that brilliant light at the top of the mountain streams into your temple through that window. And the light that streams through this healing window is a healing light. Whatever it touches is made whole. Whatever it touches is given vitality, life, strength, healing capacity. Now begin to bring into the light of the window those you care about, especially those who need healing. Those you would pray for and give your healing energy to. Begin to image them now, one by one, stepping into the light. And as they approach, you will see them in the condition in which they now appear the sickly condition or the unhealthy. But as they stand in that light, change the image, change the way in which you see them quite deliberately. Change them to whole and healthy, vitally alive, filled with energy, clear of thought and mind, feeling loved. Create an image of smile and joy on their face. And in the body, the clarity of freedom of movement, of vitality. In the muscles, the tone of the skin and of the face. Bring another. And another, if you want, or spend quite a time with just one. Going through all of the glands and organs, nerves and tissue of the body. Revitalizing here, renewing there, cleansing in another place. Building the blood, building the bones, building the strength and the clarity of the individual and the organism. And as you release them from the window, bring into the window those you love, your family, those you live with and care about and see each of them one at a time, passing through the light of the window and being filled with joy and confidence. Fill them especially with confidence, with all rightness, and say to them, think to them, communicate to them as you hold the image in the window. I love you and I care for you and I want you to know it. And even if I don't express it often enough in words 
or in actions. I want to express it this night and every night in my time of meditation. On this subtler level, the level of spirit, I want to build a bond of love and of caring and of communication with you so that we understand one another better. I love you, and I know that you are all right, beautiful, a wonderful being, and I want you to know that too. It is all right to love yourself, to have confidence, project confidence, see this loved one that you are imaging, developing greater confidence and poise, feeling good about self, happy and joyous, becoming through it all a better person because of being a loved and joyous and happy person. And bring yourself to the window. Stand in the light and feel the light of the Christ shining in and around and through and about you, renewing your mind, reminding you God has created all that you are and God does not do a poor job of creation. You are, in fact, an intricate, delicate, fascinating, wonderful, complex, fantastic being. And it is all right to know that. Think to yourself as you stand in the light, it is true about me. It is true of my body. My body is intricate, delicate, fascinating, wonderful, responsive, and I appreciate it. And my mind is all of those things. Complex, fantastic, interesting, responsive, wonderful. And I appreciate it. It is all right to appreciate me, to be confident about me. And I accept a responsibility now for feeling confidence about myself, for feeling good about me. I accept that responsibility to give myself love, and I will enter the quiet of this evening, and especially the time of sleep, looking forward to further attunement, listening, renewing, growing. And I will wake in the morning with an awareness of dreams which I will record and begin a beautiful day tomorrow. And I will close this meditation time with a feeling of thanks and of joy. I will go out of the Hall of Records through the temple, through the light at the top of the mountain, and come down the seven gardens one at a time. I may wish to climb up into the temple again, to ascend the mountain, and there to sleep the night's sleep. 